So one of the real surprises for me in making the film was learning how much damage our agricultural practices are doing to the planet. Whether that's the constant clearing of land and soil degradation, whether it's uh, the amount of food waste that goes to landfill, which contributes huge amounts of greenhouse gases, uh, the amount of energy we use shipping foods around the world, and indeed our livestock practices. In fact, if you look at over the last 10,000 years, the degradation of soils has contributed more to climate change than the burning of fossil fuels. So Project Drawdown is an initiative that looked at some of the best solutions to reverse global warming and both Paul Hawken and, and Eric Tonsmeyer both appear in the film. And Project Drawdown found that eight of their top 20 solutions actually involved agriculture and the food industry. There are several major issues with agriculture as we practice it today. One is the emphasis on monocultures where you're growing one species. So we can address that in several ways. We can rotate crops. Then we want to try and add in cover crops where you're planting crops that are actually not there to be consumed by people. They're there to build the soil. And then the last piece is reducing tillage. When you put those three together, you get conservation agriculture. At Drawdown, we'd like to see people take it even a step further to turn conservation agriculture into regenerative by adding practices like compost application. Can we add some perennials, like trees or perennial grasses, and use of organic practices? Plants absorb carbon. That carbon actually goes into the roots. The minerals in the soil become bioavailable to the plant itself. As the plant gets those minerals, it is healthier, is more resistant to insects and to disease. That soil becomes more friable or more fertile. Soil is a living medium, it's a living creature. <laughs> All of these carbon sequestration practices bring numerous co-benefits. The primary one that they almost all share in common is they increase the water holding capacity of the soil. So we're looking at flood and drought proofing farms while sequestering carbon. And in the context of climate change adaptation, with increasingly unpredictable weather, diversification is a really, really important risk management strategy for farmers. So regenerative agriculture is actually going back to cycles that have created the abundance and beauty of the earth itself. So as exciting as a lot of these ideas are, there are some blocks to us implementing uh, these type of practices. And one is that at the moment, uh, a lot of subsidies, especially in the US, go to large agriculture companies. 80% of our food comes from small farm holders. So if we can start subsidizing those people to make changes, then we're gonna to get to this future a lot faster. There's just a very old paradigm that says that we need constant fertilizers and chemicals on the soil. And a lot of farmers are, are reticent or reluctant to change, especially in the current environment where they are doing it tough. So to take a risk is, is asking a lot of them. We've teamed up with an organization called Carbon8 here in Australia, and it allows you to actually donate some money, uh, do a recurring payment or a one-off payment, and that money pays farmers to transition to more regenerative practices. For every percentage of carbon they put back in the soil, they get paid money. So it allows them to make these changes, put more carbon in the soil, improve the quality of their food, and retain more water, all at the same time as pulling the carbon out of the atmosphere. So if you do want to get involved, head to our website or to the Carbon 8 website.